This video is made for adult collectors because these toys are older than me. I'm really liking these G1 toys. Like the shelf is now this full and I have to leak into the Nero Challenger display. Sorry guys, you're being moved somewhere else. So last time when I looked at a bunch of G1 toys and talked about them, the facts came from my late friend Andrew who told me about them. I wanna to touch on that too. I did see the memorial. I didn't actually physically see it, unfortunately, but Dr. Lockdown showed me tons of videos and pictures on it. That was done from at King's Comics and I, I love that. It was really touching and cool to see them have all this stuff set up. I still miss them. But he got me into G1 and we're gonna be looking at more G1 toys here because I bought a few more that are really awesome. But before I get into that, this video is brought to you by Try Treats. Try Treats is a snack subscription box service that gives you like snacks straight to your door once a month from different countries. And this time we got India. That's us. We're, we're brown. We're India. We, 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 yes. <laughs> I was allergic to 90% of the snacks, but my parents had them. And here's my dad trying them. I'm gonna have the happy, happy chuckle chip cookies. Mmm, these are good. Don't eat the whole bag. Hide and seek chocolate rolls. It comes in a tray. Another good one. So if you want to get your own snack box once a month, you can check them out. Links in the description down below and use discount code THATTOYGUY in all caps for 15% off your first box purchase, which is pretty cool. And my parents are always excited when we get a box of snacks, so they love it. And I mean, I love the ones I can eat, so that's pretty cool. But thank you so much for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the actual toy. I'm going to sneeze. I have to sneeze. Damn it, it's not coming out. So today's offerings are some cool ones and one that's actually new. G1 toys may be expensive. A lot of times they're expensive, but if you know where to look, you can get some for real cheap, 30 bucks for this Motormaster here. Here we have a mostly white Jetfire, a Galvatron, a Motormaster, and a reissue Hound. Yeah, they reissued Hound. I'm just as surprised. They're also apparently doing Perceptor, so that's gonna be fun. Anyways, these G1 toys. We'll start with Hound, because he's my least favorite, but he's still good. This is part of the retro reissues line, where they're like basing things off the 86 decos from the film. And while it looks plain, because it's missing the stickers, I still like it. He's a lot smaller than I was expecting at being around Origins Bumblebee hype, but it's still cool to look at. There's a lot of nice tooling on display, and the paint is pretty well done for what little there is. And he has die-cast feet, which is a plus. When I first saw the pictures of this, I thought he was just all plastic, because die-cast is expensive nowadays, but they still put it in this thing, so I was surprised. What I don't like is just like Starscream, he has parts that just hang around and do nothing. Pain. His articulation is just arms go forward, and he has a gun and a missile launcher. Don't know why they took the spring away from the reissue, because safety laws are different now, but the firing missiles, I did, they, they neutered it here too. I find that a bit weird. But that's all he really does, so let's transform him. It's super easy, but I love how going back into bot mode, you swing the wheels out, it pushes the arms out for you. That's very cool. Alt mode is a Jeep. It's just a Jeep, but it looks nice. Even my mom likes it a lot. I mean, yeah, there's the tire and the cannon you have to parts for him, but it's G1. That, that happens all the time. What I don't like is when bits have nowhere to go and the robot mode parts now have nowhere to go pain, but it's just a very nice and hefty Jeep and I love it. Motormaster was a grail for me and I'm so excited to have this. This is a G1 Motormaster. I don't have the gun. I don't have the sword. I don't have the car. I don't have any of the combiner parts, but I have the figure and he was only 30 bucks. Yeah, $30 Canadian. I, I still can't get over that, but he looks like a right idiot. His head is there. It's not supposed to be a box, but because the artists for the character models, when they drew the models, they drew the kibble parts attached to it as part of the design. So he's forever stuck with a box head. Just like Megatron is not supposed to have those black eyebrow things or the helmet. He's supposed to have a crown, but because of the kibble of the G1 toy, the artist just drew that as a bucket head. I'm so happy to have this though. I, it needs a good cleaning and sticker treatment, but it's so cool to have. All it does though is move his arms, but you know, G1. Man is just a rectangle. Transforming him is very damn simple. It's just collapse him down into another version of a rectangle. 
I love the truck mode though. It really feels like a Hot Wheels scaled thing. Yes, I went all the way to the dollar store to buy a Hot Wheels car just for this comparison. Truck doesn't turn, but eh. Now he is also a combiner, but I'm not doing that as I have none of the combined mode parts, nor do I have any of the members, but he also has a base mode and it's cool base mode. I like how the ramp is built in as opposed to every other combiner torso having a separate ramp piece. He also connects to Trypticon, which is awesome, but I totally forgot to shoot that with my G1 Trypticon, but the Beast Wars version, I'm sorry. Jetfire is surprisingly mostly white. And that's a thing because his plastic yellows so quickly. His chest is yellow, but eh, it's, it's very common to find these things in just a horrible yellow state. So this complete and mostly unyellowed for 150 bucks ain't that bad. He does not look like the cartoon model because of the whole mess of story I'm not going to get into right now, but it was a whole legal thing, but it still looks cool. I was going to get the limited run Macross toy that was coming out uh, semi-recently, but I heard that was a bit poo. The red pieces, though, are the stuff that gets lost all the time, and these actually aren't the original red parts, minus the backpack. The bits on the arms and the legs are 3D printed, which is really, really cool. They feel a bit frail, though, because they're 3D printed parts, but they're still nice, and I'm glad the guy actually, like, did that to complete this jet fire. He has a massive gun and it's got a clip to clip onto the jet and stuff, but that's the only part I'm actually missing. So this being old, it has a couple of issues with the posing simply because of, you know, the amount of play this thing's had. Like the landing gear right here, if I go to move the arms back, he'll just, the landing gear pops out and then he just throws it back and I'm like, no, stop it. You're not at a club. You are in my house. Be civil. Anyways, head can swivel and look up and down, which is awesome. Shoulders can do a full 360. They can go in and out. You have an elbow joint that bends 90 degrees and a bicep swivel. You have hips that can go forward. They can go back. That, that, that came undone. It's 3D printed. <laughs> it's a byproduct of that. You have a knee bend. It also goes this way. Um, and then the feet can open and close. So he's quite poseable. Um, the arms are more, po more poseable than the legs because like the legs can only go over there and back there, but the arms and the head can do so much stuff for a 1980s toy, which is saying a lot considering the other stuff that came out that year was like this. Transformation is something you have to get be blah. Transformation is something you have to be careful doing. I've heard he likes to break in the center, but just be careful with it. I also am going to remove the red parts because they are 3D printed and I don't want to break them if they fall off. Jet mode looks great. Wait, wait, it's, it's missing something. There we go. Yeah, that's that's the stuff. I really want the Masterpiece one to go with this. I think it would look so cool. And the New Age one, the toy colors. But anyways, this jet mode, it looks awesome. And now I can see where this was stored. It was stored in jet mode because the whole jet is yellow at the top. You can girl walk him, but I don't want to risk anything. So I'm just going to use this image from Google. The landing gear does shoot out because it's on springs and like it's really powerful. You could probably hurt someone with it. So yeah, Jetfire is great. I would love for them to reissue this, but like legal stuff, I guess, would probably not let them reissue this. This, this, this is my absolute favorite G1 toy I own now. I'm so happy I got this for like a hundred bucks complete and it works too. This thing is big and heavy and imposing. It's chunky, it's intimidating, and it really needs new stickers. <laughs> I'll toy hacks all my G1 toys eventually, but yeah, it isn't in the best shape. The knee pads are chipped to all hell. The arms are a bit loose, but it's not bad for a hundred bucks G1 Galvatron. But the fucking noises. Oh my God, you gotta hear him. My man's loud as fuck. So he takes an, he's, oops, I'm, need to extend the legs. There we go. Didn't want to extend the torso. He takes a nine volt. Oh my god, will you cooperate? There we go. He takes a 9 volt battery in his chest. I don't know why 9 volt, but he takes a 9 volt. You press his pee pee and he does this. Why? Why do you make such a strange noise? And then, and then, and then, and then, he makes other noises. You flip the switch. That made a weird noise, like a springy noise at the end. Oh, that's the button. But that's also a strange noise. And then, and then, and then, and then, 
Flip it all the way to the other side. I hate, I, I, I hate the noises this thing makes. You will be quiet now. Quiet. He comes with this handgun that he never used ever, but it was in the IDW fiction as his fusion cannon for a bit, and I honestly love the way that that looked and kind of wish it could peg in here, but eh, whatever. So Galvatron's like Jetfire in the sense that he has quite a bit of articulation for being an old 1980s toy. I'm gonna just remove the uh, cannon so I can show you this. The head doesn't move because there's lights in it, uh, but the shoulders can do a full 360 degrees. Shoulder pads can move. The arms can go in and out. You have an elbow bend as well. He does have a, you know, move the back bit. He does have a waist joint. And then the hip shut, the hips can go forward and they cannot go back at all. Unless when you click them in for transformation and I've untabbed it and it's bothering me now. Come on, there we go. And you do have a knee bend and a toe tilt up and down if you want to use that. But like he does have usable articulation, but unlike Jetfire, because the head doesn't move, it just kind of looks a bit useless. Um, but you can get him into fusion cannon poses. Rah! Except transforming him is very easy and satisfying to do, especially plugging the cannon into the head. But the cannon attachment in robot mode and the handgun like have nowhere to go. Again, pain. Alt mode is a cannon with treads and it looks weird. I was never a fan of the G1 alt mode from a G1 Galvatron, but I will say this toy in particular, I think looks a lot cooler. I don't have the generation selects one anymore to compare it to, but I didn't like that alt mode as much as I like this one. He can also become a gun and a trigger that does the same thing as the robot mode sounds did. But it's a cool thing and I really like having it and it is very heavy too for just being all plastic. Like I don't think there's any exposed die cast on this other than maybe the hip joints, but I could be wrong. But yeah, I think Hasbro needs to start reissuing more of the less popular G1 toys. Hound is a great start. And like I said, Perceptor is coming. Can't wait for that. But if they're doing all these 1986 movie decos, I really, really hope they do Galvatron. And I really hope that they do like Astro Train and Blitzwing and the uh, cone heads. It would be like so cool. Imagine we got that G1 RC mold finally. <laughs> that would be great. Anyways, that's been my look at a bunch of G1 toys. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>